stand to sing our first hymn, number 183, Holy, Holy, Holy. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We say together Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires none and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Yahweh Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord have mercy. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ.
confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen all goodness, and keep in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. The Collect for the Feast of Christ the King. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. seated for our first reading. First reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 11 to 16 and 20 to 24. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flocks when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from the places where they are scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pass to them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lay down in good grazing land, and they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. 
I myself will tend my sheep and make them lay down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you shove with flank and shoulder, but in all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away, I will save my flock, and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place them over one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to the end. Ephesians 1, 15 to the end. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for our gradual hymn number 77, crowning with many crowns.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the book of Matthew. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you in a you a stranger and invite you in? Or needed clothes and clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Almighty Father, enlighten the eyes of our heart so that we may know the hope you have called us to. Open our eyes to the glory of yourself and our Lord Jesus Christ and the riches that await us who hope and live in him. Amen. Please be seated. Our dear sister will sing number 165 for us. He is Lord. As we prepare our hearts and minds for the words of Christ our Savior.
Thank you. Jesus is indeed Lord of all. Our text is taken from Ephesians 1.22. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head of all things for the church. Today, we celebrate the feast of Christ the King. Our Lord Jesus Christ, as the King over his creation, our world, his church, us, his children, and all those who have hope in him. Today also marks the end of the Christian calendar year. So there is a lot happening today. And it is very appropriate that we end the year acknowledging the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is totally irrelevant whether you accept it or not. It's a reality, just as breathing in the air that we breathe in without even thinking about it. In this kingship, is the creation of the world, ourselves, his children, and all that inhabits the world that we live in. It is rather like Christmas. You know, it's, this is not a sermon about Christmas, but whether you like it or not, Christmas exists and is celebrated, as the name implies, Christ Mass. And so whether we like it or not, the kingship of Christ is very real. And it reminds me of the vision of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6. I think go and read verse 1 to 6. It shows about the eternal kingship of God. In the world that we live in, we have kings and we have rulers. But there has really never been a ruler that has ruled and put his life out or her life out for their people. Over the last few years, we have seen how people use power, how people try to extend their term in office, how people rule with a iron fist over their citizens, how rulers plunder and sell their people into perpetual slavery by flogging off all their inheritance. We have seen abuse of power in the high places. We have seen abuse that shows there is one rule for one and one for all. In the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ, his total humility, he came, he saw, he lived, and he died for our sins. This is a selfless king who looks out for all those whom he has created. He looks out for their well-being, not for his own well-being. If it was so, he wouldn't have gone on that cross to die. So there is a massive difference about the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ, his lordship over his creation, than the ones that we see around us and I've seen throughout the ages. And perhaps rulers and kings and queens and all those in power and authority will have a lot to learn that even though power is neutral, 
it is not there for you to use to abuse those that have been kept in your charge. To be a king as we heard in our reading from the prophet Ezekiel is to be a judge and a shepherd of his sheep, verse 24. And I, the Lord, will be their God, in verse 20. We see the Lord as judge. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. The prophet Ezekiel speaks of the judgment that awaits the shepherds, which is bishops, priests, deacons, and elders of the Lord's church, who have not looked after his sheep, which is the people of God, and allow them to stray and starve through lack of good biblical guidance and practical help. It also refers to leaders, as I said earlier on, around the world, who think that by being leaders, it allows them to plunder the resources of the nations that they rule over. It allows them to do as they wish and abuse their power over their citizens. Leaders and all those in positions of authority, whether you are a manager or not, will take note to look at the kingship, the leadership, of our Lord Jesus Christ and try and perhaps model their own lives on that. The kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ tells us what he is about. To be a ruler means to rule, to lead. And it's so graphic, it says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. Matthew 21, 31 talks about the second coming of our Savior. He will come to judge. It's not a world, a word that we like so much in our world. And I keep on laughing and amusing at times when people tell me, oh, we're not called to judge, we, you know, we're, not, we're, not, we're not judgmental. Actually, by saying that you are being judgmental, all of us have been judgmental every single moment of our lives. We make judgments. It's a lie. You can call it whatever you want. We make judgments. When you appoint somebody, you make a judgment. When you make a decision, you make a judgment. Without making a judgment, if you're about to cross the road, you'll get run over. If the light says red, you, make a, you have to make an instant judgment to stop your car and not move, even though you might be in a hurry. We make decisions every day. Call it decisions. You might not call it judgment. Call it decisions. We make decisions every day. Turn left, turn right. What should I wear? What should I eat? I've got 10 pence left. Should I buy food or pay my rent? We make decisions every single day. It's disingenuous to say, oh, I'm not a judgmental person. Everybody can go their way. If everybody went their way, there will be total anarchy and chaos. And that is the difference between heaven and hell. Heaven is about order. Nations that have no order are chaotic, are in a war zone, in a state of decay, chaos, madness. And he will reign supreme. The kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ is about order, it's about justice, it's about love, it's about merit. It's about using, allowing each person to use the God-given talent that they have been given to make a difference in the world around them. It's a delusion. Christ himself said, I will come to judge. He talked about what he expects of us as his children, to care for one another, 
to look out for each other in our moments of needs. There is no point in seeing a, a hungry person or a desperate person saying, Oh, the Lord bless and keep you. Off you go on your way. And you've got two loaves of bread in your hand. Our faith, faith without action or good works, is just meaningless. There is no point in promising people down the road, oh, we will come and help you out while you have no intention of doing so. As our King, Christ demands, and I use the word demands from us, a life of holiness and righteousness, of justice, of mercy, to one another, of compassion. That is the list that is demanded of us. And I will say, go and read your gospel written very well indeed. Matthew 25, verse 31 to the end. This is also about a call to judgment, especially from the household of God, the church. And as we prepare for Advent and Christmas, to celebrate this promised return of our Lord and King Jesus Christ, the question then arises, and this is a question I pose to you, who is the king of your life? Who is the Lord of your life? That is a question I want you to ask yourself, to ponder upon and to answer it as best as you can. I pray that you will come to a right decision, that our Lord Jesus Christ is indeed the King and the Lord of your life. I grew up, and some of you will um, bear with me, you know, you know, there was a time they used to sell all these plastic plaques, and um, when either your mother, your aunt, or neighbor went to the market, they brought one back home. And there's one that I've never really forgotten. Christ is the head of this house, the unseen guest at every meal, the silent listener to every conversation. Remember that? You have plaques, different ones. There used to be a time people went mad for it. And I wish it was still around. Some were tastefully done and some all in different colors. You had scripture all over the place. I believe this came into existence in the Victorian or early Edwardian times. And as a church family, as individuals, perhaps we need to remember that Christ is the head of our life, of our homes, the unseen guest at every meal, the silent listener to every conversation. When people tell me that, oh, I feel alone, I tell them that, no, you are not alone as a Christian. Christ is always with you. Your anguish, your pain, your anxiety, my cloud, your judgment, and not allow you to see him. But trust me, he's always there. Always. Let us remember that he is with us, not just in the divine liturgy, but also at every single meal that we share in his name. Do we realize that he is indeed the silent listener to every conversation that we have had in our lives, wherever that may be? So when men plot evil in darkness, Christ is already listening. When people plot on how to abuse other nations or other people, Christ is always listening. So when you, you as an individual, speak ill against your brother or sister, or plot against the household of God or his church, Whatever we say or do, we will stand to be judged before God in thought, word, or deed. Let us remember that. As James tells us, let us learn to put a bridle in our mouth 
in our tongues and in our hearts. Galatians 3, 20 to 29 shows us what matters to God. God is no respecter of persons. His only criteria is, are you my child? John 3, 16. To be in Christ is to believe in him and to do his will. If you are not for him, then you are against him. There is no in-between. You cannot sit on the fence. You cannot sit in the fence. You are either for Christ or you are not. This is why the Feast of Christ the King is very important and allows us to reset our minds like a yearly MOT before we enter the season of Advent and Christmas. Who is the king of your life? Who do you pledge your loyalty to? Who do you aspire to follow? And we do need good leaders in the world that we live in today. We, live, we need leaders who are there for their own people that they've been put in charge of. Leaders who know when to leave. Leaders who don't have to sit and be governing for the next 50 years. Because guess what? Your power is not eternal. Just like the sand of time, you will be forgotten. But the kingdom of God lives forever. This is what every one of us needs to realize. Our time here is only temporary. Only God's kingdom lives forever. All that man builds, eventually the sand of time will cover it. Empires rise and have risen and fallen, but only the kingdom of Christ remains still today. And I think that is a lesson for those who are building fully upon fully for themselves as their legacy. The only legacy that needs to be built is the legacy of our Lord Jesus Christ. I think some build libraries to themselves. Some have mausoleums. Yes, for the first two years people will visit, but they'll forget about it. Some have wasted the, their nation's money while people die in poverty, building statues and monuments at millions of pounds while people are dying. Vanity upon vanity. The only kingship that is eternal, that can grant you safe passage in this life and the next, is the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not too late to change. It is not too late. It is not too late to pledge your loyalty to Christ. Luke 23, 39 to 43. The thief on the right hand side eventually found faith at the last moment. And for those of us who say we are Christians, don't take it for granted. Do not take it for granted. Matthew 26, verse 40, 24 to 25 and verse 40, if you have a look at it. Judas Iscariot had faith, but he lost it at the end. We have to constantly renew our trust and belief in God. Let us learn. Let us learn. Learn from the kingship of Christ. Christ came to save us. Came to give us a new lease of life. To make us better than what we are. To make us realize our potential as his children. On this feast of Christ the King, let us reflect on the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ and what it means for us. Let us heed his call to follow him, to follow him, and in all things to do his will. I pray that as we reflect, as we pray, we will pray to rededicate our lives to Christ. Let us also pray for our own leaders to rule for the sake of the many, not for their own. Not for their political parties, 
but for the nations that they are called to be leaders upon. Let us pray for our own Prime Minister to make good decisions and all those in power over us in the UK. Let us pray for the leaders in our borough to make decisions based on justice, on righteousness, on humanity, not on party, political, whatever you want to call it. Let us pray for true justice. Let us pray for distribution of resources equally to benefit the people of this nation and not a few. Let us pray for those who are making money out of human misery when others are dying and in need. Let us pray for a just nation. Let us pray for the kingdom of Christ to rule over our nation. Let us pray for the church of God, for the leaders to stand up for what is true, for what is biblical, for what is right in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us, let us all decide to follow Christ now and always until the end of the ages. Amen. Perhaps you might sing for us, I have decided. Thank you. Let us stand to say the creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We are filled one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us sit or kneel for our prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we come from a world full of so many things to tempt us and lead us away from you, from a world full of despair and anguish and pain. We come with our own concerns and doubts and fears. We come hurting, tired with the struggle and strain of just living. We come feeling lost and uncertain and just as we are. We come because you called us. We come because we must. We come to give you worship and honour and praise. We come to be made whole. We come because you came and go on coming, our living Saviour and Lord. Lord, you are worthy of all our thanks and praise. You deserve nothing less than all we can give you. While what we can give you is small and undeserving of notice, you take it and cherish it. We thank you, Lord, for our lives. Without you, we are nothing. Without your creation, we have no reason for being here. We thank you, Lord, for our families and friends. 
for giving us the strength to stand in unity, to be pillars of support and sources of praise. We thank you for the animals and the flowers that you created, for the small pleasures in life that mean so much and can light up the day. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be stewards of your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we do not come to worship you because we must, but because we long to. We do not come because we are worthy, but to give you glory. We do not come for our own benefit or to receive a blessing, but because you are worthy of all our thanks and praise. Lord, thank you for the pastors and spiritual leaders who have input into our lives. Help us to glean knowledge and understanding of your ways from them, so that we can come to know you better. Bless them and help them always to be the men and women of God you created them to be. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you give guidance to our leaders, that they can stand up and do what is right for this country and others and act upon the best interests for its people. We ask, Lord, that you shine your light in their heart so that they can see through the troubled times and lead its nation safely through. Father, when we see a lost and troubled world and when we are aware of the sadness, sorrow and pain all around us, we pray, send your word of hope, love and joy to bring an end to guilt and fear and suffering. We ask for you to help those in their time of need and that you continue to support and guide them. We pray for any here at Emmanuel who are suffering and for those who know others to be in pain, that your kindness and love may offer them comfort. We pray for those who have lost loved ones and that your love and mercy will see them through their grief. We ask that you will be with them, Lord, providing your love and comfort. Let them know, Lord, that they have support and can lean on you, Lord, always. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for the youth and elderly here at Emmanuel and all over the world. Continue to bless them in their lives and in all that they do. Help those that need guidance or just a friend to confide in. We pray that you continue to look over everyone here with your love and mercy. Bless them with your Holy Spirit and help them to grow in your love and goodness that their lives will become enriched. Lord, we know that regardless of what situation we are in right now, you have an abundance of blessings for us. Right where we are, you are working powerfully in our lives. Thank you for saving us, Jesus, and setting us free from all that will keep us from moving into everything you have for us. Thank you for filling us with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for loving us. Lord, in your mercy. We ask you, Lord, to come into our lives. Help us, Lord, to make you king of our hearts and minds and king of our lives. Help us to live and grow in your love, to bring others to you by being an example of your goodness. Help us to open our hearts to you, Lord, so that we can guide and direct us along the path of your choosing. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. To crown all things, there must be love. To bind all together and complete the whole, let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the living Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
yourself once for all upon the altar of the cross and redeem the human race by this perfect sacrifice of peace. As King, he claims dominion over all your creatures, that he may bring before your infinite majesty a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with angels and archangels, and with the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join in the unending beam of praise. Forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from you. For time is a kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his son.
Let us pray. Stir up, O oh Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they plenteously bring it forth the fruit of good works. May by you be plenteously rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say to you, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. To him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out to the power of your soul to live and walk in your praise and glory. Amen. And now for our weekly Thank you. 